Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Cleopatra. Okay, so reason why we're talking about Cleopatra is because apparently Netflix did some type of a show uh, where they depicted her as black. Okay, uh, so the issue here is not that they're depicting her as black, it is that they are rewriting history, uh, which is something that leftist socialists uh, have been trying to do for a very long time. Now, um, I, uh, in years past, probably going about back about 15 years, I did spend a good deal of time uh, studying Egyptian history, and I probably have forgotten a lot more than I actually remember, uh, but there's a couple of things that, that did stand out, and I can just kind of recall off of the top of my head. So, uh, the first thing I want to bring out is that the 25th dynasty uh, of, you know, during the uh, Egyptian, um, I guess, empire, uh, uh, the 25th dynasty was in fact black, okay? They were uh, basically Nubians, uh, which was, um, basically they were from modern day Sudan, okay? So it was uh, the area that the Egyptians referred to as, as Nubia. And there was a kingdom over there called Kush, uh, which at some point, I think it was something like somewhere around 700 or so BC, um, they, they, uh, they invaded and dominated the, the, the Egyptians and they established a Nubian dynasty, okay? And they were 100% black, no question about it. Uh, Egyptians are, were pretty good about um, documenting uh, their history, particularly the history of their pharaohs, okay? Uh, we probably know a lot more about the about the, uh, the history of Egypt than we know of, let's say, the middle, the, uh, the Middle Ages, right? Uh, the European Middle Ages. Um, so we, we do know a good deal about Egyptian history. 25th dynasty, no question about it, they were black. Uh, in fact, when the Egyptians do their hieroglyphs, uh, they usually uh, paint uh, women white, men red, because that reflects them being outdoors, uh, either in the fields or doing military service. So they're basically absorbing the sun. So the reddish color reflects the tan that Egyptian men had. Uh, and then they represented uh, people, let's say, from Nubia uh, as black. So they were very, very clear about that. And again, that is reflected in the 25th dynasty. So um, his thing, there's no reason to look at Cleopatra and say that she was black because for one thing uh, the Ptolemaic dynasty was not very successful okay um, so let's talk about Cleopatra's dynasty um, she was a descendant of one of Alexander the Great's generals okay so what happened was uh, Alexander the Great um, you know first he conquered most of Greece uh, then he went towards Persia conquered Persia uh, then he went down towards Egypt, uh, conquered Egypt, okay? Um, so, so the interesting thing about Alexander, right, and, uh, well, first of all, let's say this, when Alexander died, which was, uh, he died fairly young, around 33, so after he created his empire, he pretty much uh, died, uh, it was split into four, okay? So Ptolemy, one of his generals, he got the area that was basically Egypt, um, and um, the interesting thing is that with the uh, the Macedonians, right? Because the, Macedon the Greek Macedonians um, in Macedon, okay, uh, Alexander and his father Philip II, uh, they were kind of considered. I mean, they were king. They were kings, but they were more like uh, a first among equals. Okay, so they they weren't king uh, in the sense of like anointed by the gods or something. They were kings in the sense of. Uh, the leading lord, okay, so that was um, what, you know, how the Greeks saw their kings, okay. Uh, now the Persians, because remember now Alexander went, he conquered Persia, the Persians considered their kings like as anointed by the gods, okay, um, and, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, they, you know, basically they were, uh, they were selected, they were basically essentially holy, they weren't gods, but they were kind of like holyish. Okay, that's a, kind of a good way to put that. Now, in Egypt, on the other hand, 
the pharaohs, okay, were considered gods on earth, okay. Um, so, so, so in Egypt, um, you know, you were basically a god if you were a pharaoh, okay. Uh, and that applied to all the pharaohs, okay, in all dynasty. Um, the pharaohs were gods. So, to the Greeks, okay, it was a lot more preferable uh, to be a pharaoh, right, than it was to be a Persian king or a Greek Macedonian king, right? Uh, so it's it's always better to be a god than it is to be a king. Okay, so so the the Macedonians they really liked this idea of being pharaoh. So uh, what they what Alexander did is he set up this city in Egypt called Ag Alexandria. Okay, and Alexandria was set up to be a Greek city. It was a city built by Greeks, and it was intended for Greeks to live in there. Uh, and the Egyptians were only allowed to come in basically to work okay um, so so you know so to so the Egyptians if they were going to be in the city they had to be there for a specific purpose okay? um, so that's so that's the nature of Alexandria where Cleopatra was now the reason why I was telling you about this whole thing about how the uh, the Greeks preferred to be pharaohs rather than kings is really important because here's the thing with with uh, with with pharaohs right if pharaoh is a god on earth um so what that means is if you're a god well a god can only marry another god okay so what that meant is if you're a pharaoh who's a god and you need another god to get married who are you going to get married to right well, you pretty much have to get married to somebody within your own family. So it was very typical in the Egyptian tradition uh, for the pharaoh to marry his sister, okay? Uh, that's how it was. So in the Ptolemaic dynasty, right? So again, Ptolemy was one of Alexander's generals, okay? Um, so going down the line after that, uh, they all pretty much married within the family, right? So that because gods only marry God. So so it's not just that Cleopatra was of uh, pure-blooded Greek descent, right? She was also of pure-blooded Ptolemaic descent because they did not marry outside of the family uh, because that was the Egyptian tradition. That's the one e Egyptian uh, tradition that they just swallowed up, right? They loved this idea of being gods, okay? So, so that's how we know that's how we know what uh, Cleopatra's bloodline is. Uh, now, I think some people have called into question uh, what her mother or grandmother might have been. Uh, again, they going with that mindset, it would have been somebody from within the family because they wanted to maintain that that God status. Okay, uh, it you know it wouldn't it, it it would not have been. Forget about it being somebody outside, somebody being Egyptian or somebody being uh, non-Greek. It wouldn't even have been somebody that was non-Ptolemy, okay? It had to be a Ptolemy, okay? So, now that I have established uh, why her bloodline had to be not just 100% uh, Greek, but also 100% Ptolemy, uh, let's take a step, go a step ahead, and again, um, the re you know why are they trying to make Cleopatra uh, appear black um, again this is all part of their um, um, uh, relabeling history okay uh, it, it would be kind of like trying to say that Martin Luther King was some was white or something you know it, it just doesn't make sense uh, it's it's just silly on its face you know now it may not be so silly uh, to somebody in Europe or maybe in China, right? If you tell them that, hey, Martin Luther King uh, was a white guy, right? Uh, you know, to somebody that's Chinese, that they, you know, they might not say, say, okay, so he was, so maybe he's a white guy. You know, to them that wouldn't be a big deal, right? But obviously here in the United States, that would be a big deal, okay? Uh, so to people that are Egyptian and who and who are Greek, if you try to make Cleopatra something other than what she actually was. You know, they don't like that very much, okay? Now, um, I want to go a step further here and say that uh, they're, they're trying to claim the wrong treasure, okay? Uh, the, Ptolemy the Ptolemaic di dynasty 
was nothing to be proud of, okay? Uh, first of all, Cleopatra was the last person in that dynasty, okay? Um, she basically, in an effort to try and save her dynasty, uh, she basically uh, became Caesar's side chick, okay? And then when Caesar was killed, uh, she then became Mark Antony's side chick, okay? Um, so, and, and beyond that, the Romans, uh, basically, especially when she became Mark Antony's side chick, uh, they, they pretty much did not like her. Uh, they didn't even like her when she was Caesar's side chick. So, the Romans in that time period referred to her as a whore, okay? Um, they had lots of really nasty things to say about Cleopatra. Um, so... Again, this is not a dynasty that I think anybody would want to claim, all right, because, number one, it was a failed dynasty that ended, you know, that basically uh, ended Egyptian sovereignty, okay? Um, um, you know, and, and the, way, the way she tried to maintain that sovereignty was by basically calling herself out uh, first to Caesar and then to Mark Antony, okay? Uh, now, as, as far as her looks, uh, she was probably a decent looking woman. Uh, I think from what I have read from the Roman uh, history side, I think the thing that mostly captivated Caesar uh, was, was the fact that she was the ruler of this Egyptian city. Uh, and Egyptian cities to the Romans at that time uh, were fantastic. They were marvelous because in Caesar's time, okay, the Colosseum had not been built yet. Okay? Um, at that time, in Caesar's time, Rome was basically mud huts, okay? Uh, it, it was not the Rome that, you know, the Rome that we normally think of with the, with the Colosseum and the temples and all that stuff. That's like, that's like 100, 200 years later, right? Uh, in, in Caesar's time, Rome was like all mud huts, very basic housing. Uh, it wasn't glamorous. So when Caesar went to, to, to Alexandria, uh, he was he was amazed with what he saw in in Alexandria. Okay, so I think that and, and also Cleopatra was educated. Okay, um, she was I think the from what I read she was the first Ptolemy that could not only obviously she could speak Greek because she was Greek, but she could also speak Egyptian. So she was the first Ptolemy that could speak Egyptian. Uh, and I'm gonna bet that she probably also spoke Roman. Okay, uh, in fact I heard she could speak a, a, a few languages. Uh, I, I knew she could speak Greek. I knew she could. She was the first to speak Egyptian. I'm going to bet that she knew how to speak Roman. So she was uh, probably very intelligent. And I think that that is really what... Uh, plus, again, the grandeur of the city, the fact that she was the queen of this city, um, was what, uh, what uh, um, I think uh, captured uh, you know, Caesar's attention and imagination. I mean, I'm sure she was pretty because she was young and pretty much... All young girls are pretty, right? Most of the time. Um, so that's so so that that's the deal with, uh, with 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 Cleopatra. So again, if you're looking for somebody to claim and relate to, um, it's probably you know, especially if you're from a, a black heritage, Cleopatra's probably not it, okay? Because she was Caesar's whore and then she was Mark Antony's whore, okay? Uh, if you're looking for something in the Egyptian history that you want to take some pride in go to the 25th dynasty okay because that dynasty accomplished a lot they erected wonderful things um you know they you know they were very successful in warfare that's where you want to go look all right because that because again now we're sticking to actual history we're not rewriting history okay so wanted to throw that out there um and yeah and this is i just wanted to give you guys an idea why uh, so, you know, a lot of people are really upset with uh, uh, Netflix trying to recolor uh, Cleopatra. And maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it, it would not have been such a big deal, right? They would have said, okay, they made a mistake. They don't know what they're doing. You know, but at this point, we know that they're doing it intentionally uh, for, I guess, brainwashing purposes, you know, for political purposes, um, you know, so that's, you know, that's, you know, basically they're just trying to stupefy the population, um, 
but yeah, so that's why a lot of people take to offense to it, including myself, because they are they're basically rewriting it. They're just trying to rewrite history, which is a pattern that we're seeing with uh, uh, with the leftist socialist type of people. So, hope you guys enjoyed this information, and I will talk to y'all soon.